Hi, welcome to another VividAquariums.com video. I'm Dave, and today I want to talk to you about how to get rid of cyanobacteria. It's also called red slime algae by many hobbyists. Now cyanobacteria can actually come in red and even some greens and blues in terms of coloration. Now, it usually will grow on the sand bed of the aquarium or on low-lying rocks and in areas where you have less flow in the aquarium. It can actually cover corals and kill corals over time, so it's definitely not something you want to have continue to exist in your tank. Best way to start dealing with it is to remove it by siphoning it out. You can actually start a siphon from the aquarium and then put a filter sock uh, on your sump, siphon into that. That way the water will pass through and the cyanobacteria will get stuck in the filter sock. Great way to help remove it from your system. Obviously, when you remove it from the system, you're reducing the population of it, and that's going to help you break the cycle of it much faster. Now, also increasing the flow in the aquarium is useful because higher flow areas make it much harder for cyanobacteria to grow. Now, if you have metal halides or T5 bulbs, you want to make sure that those bulbs aren't old. As bulbs age, they'll change spectrum, and it can make it a lot easier for cyanobacteria to grow. If you're running LEDs, most likely this is not a concern. Now, you also want to cut back on feeding the aquarium and feeding your corals. Keep the nutrient levels low. Keep your nitrate and phosphate as low as possible. That'll also help beat uh, the algae bloom or cyanobacteria much faster. Now, another option is to turn off the lights of the aquarium for three days. Cyanobacteria relies on photosynthesis to gain energy. And obviously, when you keep it in the dark, it's going to starve it out and help kill it off. If you have an aquarium with just soft coral or LPS corals, pretty much you have nothing to worry about. Clams as well can go easily three days without light. For a tank with SPS corals, you want to be a little more careful about going three days. You can turn the lights on, let's say, for two or three minutes to view the corals and see how they're doing. You want to keep a closer eye on SPS corals, but still we've had many customers who do go three days on an SPS tank without light. You don't need to cover the aquarium, just turn the lights in the tank off and make sure no direct sunlight is hitting it. And that can go a long way towards helping to break the cycle of cyanobacteria bloom in your tank. Now, there are some chemical solutions out there, such as red slime remover, but honestly, I'd, I'd like to recommend against those. I don't really like to recommend putting chemicals like that in a reef aquarium. There are other methods I've discussed that can definitely beat the problem. The problem with the chemicals is sometimes they actually can affect corals. All of them say they don't, but I've had many hobbyists come in who had some negative effects on corals, especially SPS, when using chemical solutions for cyanobacteria. If you do choose to go that method, you'll need to remove any carbon and turn off your protein skimmer for the duration of the treatment. And then when the treatment's over, it usually takes three or four days, you're going to want to turn your protein skimmer back on, at which point the cup will probably fill up 15 or 20 times at least, and you'll need to continually empty the cup of that protein skimmer until it removes the medication out of the water. And then you'll also want to do a large water change, at least 30, 40%, maybe a couple water changes, and put your carbon back into the system. So again, personally, I don't recommend going the chemical route. Use the other methods I discussed to beat the problem, and uh, definitely don't let it hang around. Get rid of it and be aggressive about it. Thanks, guys.